One day, in the Buddha's time, Isirasi Teri and Poti Teri were having tea. They were both Pikunis, or Buddhist nuns who were skilled in contemplating the Buddha's teachings, and both were fully enlightened as Arahants. Poti Teri was an older Pikuni who had experienced a lot of suffering in her life, which had led her to ordain. Therefore, she was curious as to why a happy, beautiful, and young woman such as Isidasi Teri had decided to renounce the world and strive for enlightenment. Young Teri, you are so lovely and your youth has not yet faded. What did you see? What flaw in the world did you see that led you to pursue renunciation? With a kind smile, Isirasi Teri told her story. Isirasi was born in Ucheni, the capital of the kingdom of Avanti. Her father was a wealthy and prominent man of high standing. She was his only and much-loved daughter. Her father married her to the son of a wealthy business friend who offered a large dowry. Isirasi was a well-behaved and well-mannered woman. Her deep respect for her parents led her to be very disciplined. She extended the respect to her parents-in-law and her husband's relatives. She was very modest and warm. She knew all that was expected of a traditional housewife, and she was very industrious and eager to fulfill her duties in order to bring respect and honor to her parents and relatives. She even cooked her husband's food herself rather than relying on servants. Isirasi performed her duties masterfully and served her husband as an ideal wife was expected to do. Her husband had every reason to be happy and rejoice that he found such a treasure in Isirasi. By no fault of her own, Isirasi's husband could not even tolerate her. He could not stand the sight of her, and even being around her made him cringe. He did not even want to consummate their marriage and refused to touch Isirasi in any way. He went to his parents and voiced his displeasure. His parents praised Isirasi and with great bewilderment asked him what she had done to make him feel this way. He explained that Isirasi had done nothing wrong. She had never acted inappropriately, displayed aggression against him, nor failed in any of her duties. However, he had had enough of her, was tired of her, and was eager to leave the house so that he would never have to see her again. His parents were devastated and summoned Isirasi to find out what had happened. They said, Sweet Isirasi, please tell us what happened to make our son feel this way. You can tell us anything and we will support and protect you. We will forgive you for anything you did. We just want to fix this. Isirasi responded, I have done nothing wrong. I have done him no harm. I have not spoken rudely to him. What have I done to have my husband hate me? With a heavy heart, they sent Isirasi back to her parents. This was cause for so much embarrassment, but they had no choice. It was either that or risk losing their son. They figured that since Isirasi was such an exemplary woman, she would be able to find a new husband and be happy. Isirasi returned to her parents in shame. Her father took his precious daughter back under his protection and started looking for a new husband for her. 
Among his friends, he found a wealthy man who was excited to marry Isidasi. He even offered half the usual dowry for her, even though she had been married before. Isirasi served her new husband with the utmost love and affection, but barely a month passed before the same strange situation arose again. The second husband lost his affection for her, became irritated by her, and could not tolerate her presence. Isirasi was sent back to her parents, and the marriage was annulled. Isirasi and her father were at a loss. They could not understand what was happening. It just so happened that shortly thereafter, a mendicant came by in search of alms. The man seemed to be in rough shape, and Isirasi's father recognized the opportunity before him. He invited the ascetic in and suggested that he shed his tattered robe and begging bowl to settle into a more comfortable life. Isirasi's father offered his mansion as the ascetic's new home, and Isirasi for his wife. The ascetic readily accepted and could not believe his good fortune. But after only two weeks, the ascetic came back to Isirasi's father and requested his old robes and bowl back. He would rather starve and live a difficult life than remain in Isirasi's presence for another day. Isirasi's parents begged and bargained with the ascetic, but he would not budge. No matter what they offered him, his only wish was to leave. Isirasi suffered immensely. She felt that she was unwanted and undesirable. She failed her family and caused them so much stress and embarrassment. Rather than bringing her family honor and praise, she felt that she brought them dishonor and ill repute. Isirasi seriously contemplated ending her life. She did not see the point in living. She had failed as a daughter. She had failed as a wife three times. She felt she no longer had purpose or value. Each moment that passed, Isirasi battered herself only with thoughts that led to more depression and suffering. At that moment, a Pikuni named Chinna Data came to her father's house on her alms rounds. Seeing the Pikuni's calm demeanor and countenance, Isirasi decided that she wanted to become a Pikuni. This thought awakened something inside her, and she felt hope creep inside her mind. Something screamed to her that this was the path she was meant to take. Isirasi made her wishes known to her father. He said, Daughter, you know I love you, but you've already brought so much disgrace upon our family name. What am I supposed to tell people? My daughter was returned by three husbands? She left to become a Pikuni. How can I face my friends? What will they say about me? No, 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 I will not have this. I do not allow this. Isirasi responded, Father, I have done nothing wrong. I have done everything that I was supposed to do. If you will not let me ordain, I will kill myself. And you will be without a daughter. What would your friends say then? What will your heart say then? Her father was reluctant to allow her to ordain, but when faced with either an ordained Isirasi or a deceased one, the choice was clear. 
He then said, Then I wish you the best. Hopefully you can create merit that can counter the karma you must have created in the past. Isirasi bowed at her father's feet and gathered her things. With great sadness, Isirasi said goodbye to her parents and silently followed the Pikuni to the monastery. Her heart still had attachments to her parents and her comfortable life, but the suffering she experienced, embarrassment from being rejected by three husbands, fear of the gossip from people in the community, and sadness from disappointing her parents and seeing them suffer, was more than she could bear. At the monastery, Isirasi ordained as a Pikuni. For seven days, she put forth continuous and energetic effort in order to reach her goal of enlightenment. On the seventh day, along with her enlightenment, Isirasi attained three supernormal faculties. The ability to recollect past lives, the ability to know the passing away and rebirth of beings, and the knowledge that her defilements were eliminated and could never return. Through her ability to see her past rebirths, Isirasi Teri was able to see her past actions and the results. Thus, she finally knew the reason behind her karmic situation. In a past rebirth, Isirasi was born a handsome, rich goldsmith. He was young and was very intoxicated by beauty. In complete disregard for others, he seduced their wives. He saw it as a game and strove to collect as many conquests as possible. He never cared about love or anyone's feelings. He only cared about the thrill. He broke many hearts, but this did not affect him in the least. After he died, his soul landed in the deep pits of hell the pain and suffering that he had inflicted on others was now his daily ration to dine upon. The torment was continuous, extreme, and endless. While alive, his intentions were selfish and evil, his thoughts were selfish and evil, and his actions were selfish and evil. All these compounded and added to his suffering. Isirasi explained, I suffered for a long time. After his hell sentence was complete, he had no choice but to be reborn. All memories and details of hell were forgotten. Only the fear remained. He had paid for his evil actions, but even a lengthy stay in hell could not eliminate his sexual drive. Through the animalistic cravings he still retained, he was born as a monkey. However, within seven days of his birth, the leader of the monkey clan bit off the newborn's sexual organs in order to prevent future rivalry. This caused the young monkey so much suffering, and he grew up with intense sexual desire but no means of release. As such, he was not desirable to the female members, and his desire was never satisfied. After dying at the end of his monkey life, he was reborn as a sheep. He was castrated, and was therefore unable to satisfy his sexual urges. He was forced to live in misery for 12 years and suffered from diseases, pain, and constantly had children ride on his back. 
In his next existence, he was born as an ox and was castrated. Once again, he was deprived of any chance to act on his sexual desires. He was forced to do hard labor and to pull a plow and cart all year without any chance to rest. As a goldsmith, he had avoided hard work. Now, hard work was all he did. Finally, he was born as a human, but as a hermaphrodite. In his life as the goldsmith, he was so obsessed with his male sexual organ and the sexual organs of females that he found himself having both. He was an outcast in society and was not able to satisfy his sexual urges. In each of his births, the man who was a goldsmith could not remember any of his past lives. He wondered why each life had been so unfair. He felt that he had done nothing to deserve the pain and suffering that was inflicted on him. So instead of learning his lesson, he developed anger, hatred, and extreme self-pity. This in turn caused him more suffering each and every birth, and in fact, prevented his karma from ending. In his next rebirth, the former goldsmith was reborn as an attractive young woman. Previously, women had been the objects of his desire and his playthings. Now, he was born as one. However, he was born into the lowest caste as the daughter of a failed merchant who owed money to many people. The young girl was sold as a slave to pay for her father's debts. She was still very young and did not want to leave her family, but she was not given a choice. The choice was made for her. The goldsmith chose to commit adultery and break up marriages and relationships, and now he was on the receiving end. When the slave girl was 16, the son of the wealthy merchant who bought her fell in love with her and took her as his second wife. He was already married to a kind and virtuous woman. His current wife felt distressed and rejected. The girl saw this as her opportunity to escape the life of a slave. She did everything she could to get her new husband to chase away his first wife. The young slave girl succeeded, and the first wife was cast out. Alas, after all these births, the goldsmith had finally been reborn as a human without physical defects. But because he could not remember his past, he was unable to learn and committed more evil karma that he would have to pay for. The young slave girl celebrated her victory, but little did she know what would lie ahead. After seven births filled with suffering and distress, the goldsmith was finally born as Isirasi. She had no physical defects, was born into a rich family, and was loved by her parents. But owing to her karma from her life as a young slave girl, all three of her husbands rejected Isirasi. They seemed to be repulsed by her for no reason. However, Isirasi could now see that there was a clear and fair reason. She realized that no action would ever go unrewarded or unpunished. Any action good or evil, would bear fruit. 
Our memories are incomplete, but karma does not forget. All of our actions have been recorded, and we have no choice but to be reborn, because we never accept responsibility for causing our own suffering. We generate hatred and self-pity, which leads to more suffering. We also strive for pleasures that come at a high cost. Isirasi was lucky that after being rejected by all three husbands, she did not develop or foster hatred or anger. Instead, she accepted her situation. She used the pain and suffering as a basis for her contemplations and practice. This suffering was the reason she ordained. This suffering was why she sought a way out of the seemingly endless and fruitless rounds of rebirth. And it was this suffering that allowed Isirasi to find a way out and never have to be reborn again. She told her fellow Pikuni, This was the fruit of that past deed, that although I served them like a slave, they rejected me and went their way. Of that too, I have made an end. What do you think the moral of this story is? We hope you enjoyed the video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe if you want to see our uploads.